Hey, it's Senator James Lankford. I'm in my office in Washington, D.C. It's Wednesday. Uh, very often in my office, we do a Java with James. It's time for people to be able to stop by, just say hello, and I give them an update of what's happening in Washington, D.C. Obviously, we don't have a lot of people uh, that are hanging out in D.C. right now because of COVID, though we do have more people uh, than we've had in the past. Interestingly enough, uh, we're getting a trickle of tourists to be able to start coming through D.C. It's good to be able to see everybody coming back and getting a chance to be able to visit America's capital city to be able to be a part of this. So hopefully you get a chance to be able to come as well. Let us know if you're getting a chance to be able to come this way. Let me give you an update because it's been an exceptionally busy week uh, with a lot that's going on. There's been a lot of conversation about infrastructure. Uh, there's 22 people that are currently negotiating an infrastructure package, 11 Republicans, 11 Democrats, and they're trying to be able to figure out they can actually form a plan to be able to get to an infrastructure proposal. It seems like every day there's a new proposal. President Biden started out with two and a half trillion dollars. Uh, we counter proposed with about six hundred uh, billion dollars, which is close to a normal infrastructure package, which is usually around uh, five hundred billion or so. Uh, we were stretching out the number of years. Then there's another proposal that's sitting out there you may have heard about that's w a little over one trillion, but it stretches it out over eight to ten years uh, to be able to make sure that we're still spending an equal amount and that we can actually pay for it. There's a lot of back channel communication. My main focus is. We do need to be able to do infrastructure, but we've got to be able to have pay fors that are actually real. There's a lot of conversation about we're just going to plus up the IRS and have the IRS just go after people more aggressively. That is a terrible idea. Currently, we're watching the IRS have a leak uh, for the, a lot of the tax filings. We've had a thousand plus tax filings that have been leaked out to the press from the IRS strategically and politically to be able to get out there. So clearly this is not the moment to be able to hand IRS more money when they're not being responsible with what they already have. Uh, but we're working uh, that we're doing infrastructure, but it can't be like what I've seen so far. Uh, so we got to do surface transportation, that's highways and bridges. We got to do inland waterways, broadband, some key areas, but it can't be a lot of this extra stuff that I'm seeing thrown out there. So no public proposals, just a lot of conversation to say we need it. This is the time we typically would do it. We'll see if we can actually get it done. If not, we should just extend the current plan that we're doing right now on infrastructure and to be able to keep going rather than do a new one from there. Uh, there's also a lot of conversation about the Democrats just put out yesterday from the budget committee and the Democrats only on the budget committee saying they want to do a three and a half trillion dollar reconciliation plan. Now, let me tell you what that is. Many people remember from March uh, when Democrats passed a two trillion dollar COVID bill, which was mostly not COVID. In fact, by far, the majority of it was not COVID. That was the plus up for unemployment that caused so many people to stay home because they make, could make more money at home than they could at work. Uh, it was a bunch of additional entitlement benefits that they created and a lot of money they threw out. Literally most of that $2 trillion has been allocated, but about half a trillion of it hasn't even gone out the door yet. It wasn't emergency funding. They just hid it all behind the name COVID. Now they're doing a three and a half trillion dollar proposal on top of the two trillion dollar proposal they did. That's an additional, if you're doing the math here, five and a half trillion dollars of spending on top of what they want to do on infrastructure, on top of what they want to do on normal budget spending. A normal year for us spending in the federal government is around four trillion dollars, which is a lot. They're talking about spending 12 to 15 trillion dollars this year. When we talk about we're not being serious about debt and deficit, that's what this looks like. And when people say, where does all this money come from? That's a very fair question. And it's a question we're pushing back on Democrats right now. They're trying with this three and a half trillion dollar proposal to do the largest tax increase ever in American history to be able to line up to it and then take the money and to start redistributing the wealth. Uh, they wanna to try to take money from one group and try to just pass it around to others. It's a lot of new entitlement benefits. It's a lot of new money to people for not working. Uh, it is a total rewrite of the way that we do our economy. So when you hear this three and a half trillion dollar proposal, they're basically gonna say everyone gets free money and a pony uh, if they wanna be able to get this and they're gonna lead with all that. You get free, 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 free. Uh, but no, that has to be paid for. And right now it's all debt or all this giant increase in taxes and they're saying it won't have an effect. That's the same conversation they made uh, in March when they said we can throw $2 trillion in broad money out there and it won't have an effect. We've seen inflation rise dramatically, rise faster than what we've seen in a very long time. Higher price for houses, higher price for cars, higher price for milk, higher price for bread, uh, higher price for bacon, that's really important. It's just higher price for everything right now that we're seeing. And that is directly linked to this giant $2 trillion bill that they threw out early this year that we all said would cause inflation and it has caused inflation. So 
All that to say, there's a lot we're paying attention to. There are a lot of hearings going on. I just walked out of a hearing on energy and natural resources. One of the elements they want to be able to put in the infrastructure proposal that I voted no on because it is another giant multi, multi-billion dollar proposal to be able to rewrite how energy is done in America. Uh, that we, we, we've got to do some things in energy, but that is not it, uh, what they're trying to be able to actually accomplish. So we're trying to be able to work through the process and to be able to fight this off as fast as we possibly can and work through it. We also had a hearing earlier this morning in Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs, where one of the bills that I had there dealt with guidance documents. Guidance supposedly is just guidance from agencies. It's not the force of law, uh, but agencies are using it like if I put out guidance, then you have to follow this like the force of law. And so I had a bill that went in that passed out of committee today, giving clarity to all the agencies on what guidance means, what regulations mean, and what law actually means. And so agencies can't use guidance to beat people over the head with, which is what they're currently doing. That moved through committee. But I also had a piece uh, in the uh, committee this morning dealing with uh, how we're spending Homeland Security dollars. That was one of the bills that was coming through on procurement. I asked the simple question, well, if we're gonna talk about procurement and Homeland Security, we've gotta talk about the border wall. Because right now the Biden administration is paying contractors $3 million a day not to build the wall. That's correct, $3 million a day not to build the wall uh, because there's already a contract to build it. And so all those contractors are saying, if we don't do this, then we've got to have compensation because they have a contract to do it. And so right now our tax dollars are being used to be able to pay contractors to do nothing. There's another set of contractors that are being paid to actually sit next to the steel because all the steel had already been delivered before January the 20th for the fencing and they're being paid to just sit next to it to be able to make sure no one steals it. So this calendar year, the American taxpayer has already paid over a billion dollars to not build a wall. So for all these folks that say, it's a total waste to build the wall, I'm gonna tell you what's a bigger waste is to pay people not to build the wall. I think it's a good thing to be able to build the wall. So does Border Patrol, so does Customs and Border Protection, so does DHS. This was studied by career professionals on key areas where we need to be able to have infrastructure. If you go down in that area where there's a city on the south side and a city on the north side, they will all tell you in that area, we've gotta have some kind of fencing in that area to be able to keep the two cities separate on opposite sides of the border. That's where we're talking about this wall would actually go and is going in construction. That's what President Biden has stopped. And we're losing a billion dollars in this process. So what I've done is I've pushed in every area I can. I've exposed the waste on this as much as I possibly can. I'm now blocking every DHS nominee. In fact, I'm the only Senator that's actually blocking every single DHS nominee to actually move through the Senate. I've got to get DHS's attention on this and say the American taxpayers, Oklahomans, don't wanna pay for not building the wall a billion dollars. We wanna know what the actual plan is. Currently, the Biden administration is talking about canceling something called uh, Title 42 authority, which is stopping people with COVID from crossing the border. They're talking about lifting that and allowing anyone to be able to cross the border. We've had over a hundred countries come across the border already this year from all over the world, regardless of their COVID uh, it, um, uh, infection rate at that point or their vaccination rate. Literally, Biden is talking about lifting all that and allowing more people to come across the border. We've had record numbers every month, March, April, May, June, for record numbers of people coming across the border from all over the world. This is a bigger and bigger problem, and it's continuing to grow not only at the border, but in the interior of the country, because President Biden has also locked out ICE from actually enforcing what's going on inside the country. Tomorrow, I'll be meeting in a hearing with the person that President Biden has nominated to be the next director of ICE. I have lots of pointed questions uh, for this person, that's Sheriff uh, Gonzalez from Houston, Texas. And I'll have a lot of very pointed questions about how they would enforce, what they would do, what they think about the current plan with ICE. But my focus is not something crazy. My focus is follow the law. That's what every president is tasked to do is to be able to enforce the law. Congress writes the law, does oversight of it. The president is tasked to be able to actually enforce the law. And right now, President Biden is not doing that, not doing the construction, not enforcing the law at the border, not actually enforcing ICE as well. So we're going to continue to be able to block nominees uh, from going through the process until I can get their attention, until we can actually get something changed on this, because people that I talk to all want to make sure that we're actually enforcing American law. Again, we're not any immigrant. We're just any illegal immigrant. We wanna make sure that people actually come the right way to be able to go through the process. So 
that's the issue that we're working through right now and we'll try to be able to get this done and get it done right. So God bless you in the journey. Uh, I look forward to getting a chance to be able to chat with you more. Uh, I did have kind of a fun morning early this morning. Uh, just to give you a little side personal note on this, uh, I had the opportunity to be able to lead the uh, prayer breakfast this morning with other senators and to be able to sit down with them and to be able to crack open scripture together and to be able to talk through what God's doing in my life and do a challenge to them as well. And so we're getting some of those moments early in the day and then get a chance to be able to work through all the issues through the rest of the day to be able to still continue to be able to get done what needs to get done. So keep praying for us as a Senate, keep praying for us as a nation, and uh, let's keep working together. God bless you. We'll see you soon.